Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm David Carter. I'm with the Kansas Energy Program. We're here to talk to you today about the 2023 Kansas Kid Win Challenge. Um, we're going to start off with a quick poll. Uh, Yvonne's going to get that going. Uh, just want to find out what you know um, or if you've heard of Kid Win before. So, Yvonne, can you see that? I have started the poll. Okay. So everybody's going to get it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you can see how many? It says that we have um, two more persons to go. Okay. Well, I'm not going to answer. <laughs> well, then you'll be one of my non-answering persons. Okay, here. I'll go ahead and submit an answer. All right, and if you can just, can you show that or do I need to? Um, can everybody see the poll results? Give me a thumbs up if you can. I cannot. Okay. But I don't need to, if you just want to read them off. I'll go ahead and end the poll and see what it gives us. Oh, okay. Okay, so it looks like 50% just recently learned about it. 25% um, have heard but never really looked into it. And 25% uh, said, yes, I've participated in a Kid Win Challenge. So um, to the one who participated before, we hope you really enjoyed it. And um, well, of course, that's assuming it was one of ours. <laughs> and um, Welcome back, I guess. So um, so we're going to uh, just talk about uh, the 2023, but we're going to give a shout out to our 2022 uh, Kansas Kid Win Challenge sponsors and partners. Um, so we would not be able to do the Kid Win Challenge without any of these organizations helping us. So the financial sponsors are our main backers of Kansas Corporation Commission. Uh, we get um, funding from their energy office to conduct these Kid Win Challenges. And then our corporate sponsors are Enel Green Power, uh, IT, Great Plains ITC, and the Kansas Electric Cooperatives, uh, all of whom are going to renew their sponsorship for 2023. So that's great news. And then I was just on a phone call today with uh, Olson Engineering, uh, based in, in, well, I don't know, they have an office in Kansas City. They have one here in Manhattan. Um, they're also going to join us at the kilowatt level um, with a $2,000 sponsorship for us. So that's that's great news for us. And then these other ones, the Dodge City Public Schools, Hutchinson Community College, Johnson County Community College, NKESC, Wolf Creek, and, and the Wolf Creek Young Generation of Nuclear, they all provide in-kind um, contributions for us. So they provide facilities for us uh, free of charge, um, which really helps uh, the, us retain our budget for uh, other expenses that, that are necessary for the Kid Win Challenges. So this is the historic uh, participation in the Kid Win Challenge. Uh, we took over in 2018. Prior to that, in 2016 and 2017, um, it was uh, run by a woman by the name of um, Ruth Douglas Miller. She was an electrical engineering professor here at K-State. Um, but because she had a full-time job, uh, of course, she could only do the challenge in Manhattan. When we took over in 2018, we, we recognized we weren't getting very many schools. The schools that we were getting were just in a like a two-hour radius of uh, Manhattan. So we said, OK, when we do this again, we're going to have to go out, um, take the challenge to the schools instead of expecting them to come to us. So in 2019, we established uh, four regional challenges throughout the state. 2020, we actually increased that to five. And uh, we managed to get all five of ours in before COVID hit. Uh, the only thing that we couldn't do that year uh, was conduct the statewide challenge and, of course, the the national Kid Win Challenge as well. In 2021, uh, we still uh, were restricted to a virtual Kid Win Challenge. 
So the participation was, was a little bit lacking. 2022, everything came back face-to-face, uh, -face, so that was good. We did still have some schools that were hindered from participating. They couldn't take field trips um, or uh, some other policy prevented them from participating fully. Um, but you can see we, we exceeded our uh, numbers for the number of teams that we had and for the number of uh, spectators that attended the events. And, and we were pretty close to the number of schools and, and the number of um, students that participated in the event. So, so we thought that um, 2022 was a pretty good year for us. And we are hoping to increase the competitiveness of, of this uh, Kid Win Challenge in, in 2023. So how are we looking for 2023? It's a little bit too soon to tell, but uh, we can tell everybody that our planning for the events are um, much earlier than we've than we've done in in any year. So what this means to you is that uh, you as teachers have more time to prepare to look uh, at how you might want to include this in curriculum, or if you want to do it as a uh, after. Uh, our event or, or a club event or, or, or something like that. Um, our webinars um, in 2022 were scheduled in, in January. And um, this year, this is the second of two that we've already done in August. Um, the workshops that we had were scheduled in uh, early to mid-November. And this year, we're um, knocking you know four of them out of the way in October. And then we have one uh, November 2nd and, and, a, and a 6 one November 3rd. Um, and then scheduling for the challenges in 2022, um, we didn't have the regional challenge locations locked up until July 2021. And for the 2023 Kid Win Challenge, we already had all of the locations for the regional challenges locked up by May of 2022. So a couple of months earlier on that. So everything's looking really good for the 2023. The only uh, outstanding um, detail that we still need to lock in right now is the statewide Kid Win Challenge um, where we've hit a, a few snags on that. But we will update you as, as soon as we get information on that. Uh, we do have uh, six wind energy teacher workshops scheduled throughout the the state, you can see that uh, we're going to have them in Oakley, Dodge City, Manhattan, Marion, Olathe, and Iola. So all of these workshops are free to attend. There's no there's no registration. And in fact, um, if you have to hire a substitute uh, while you attend a workshop, we're, we're going to reimburse that. We'll reimburse you for mileage to and from the workshop, and your school will provide you lunch. And um, we will give you a Vernier Kid Win Basic Win uh, Experiment Kit that has a value of about 129. So we'll actually pay you to come <laughs> to come to our Wind Energy Teacher Workshop, where hopefully you will learn um, how to have a very successful Kid Win Challenge. Um, what we want uh, as the the end result of anybody participating in the Kid Win Challenge is for the students to have an absolute great time learning uh, about STEM education and how to overcome problems and react to adversity and and um, experience teamwork and, and all of that. So uh, it's a very friendly competition. Many of our teams actually end up helping each other um, as even though they're in competition with each other. So um, hopefully you'll be able to make it to uh, to one of these and um, we we hope to see you there. So this is what the 2022 Kid Wind looked like from a national perspective. And I just wanna show you how well represented Kansas is in this, this national Kid Wind Challenge. Um, in fact, uh, the the founder of, of National Kid Wind has uh, actually given us compliments from the National Kid Wind stage. So we feel we feel very proud of that. And, and of course, all of you teachers and, and all of your students who participate are the ones who drive that success. And we just we just want to keep it going for all of you. 
So new for 2023, we have, uh, we actually purchased three new wind tunnels uh, just this uh, past couple of months. So that brings our total to nine wind tunnels that we can loan out to any of the schools that want to uh, practice with a an actual competition wind tunnel um, to more um, accurately prepare their students for the regional and, and statewide and hopefully national kid wind competitions. Um, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to hold two of those out. We're going to have those just for our practice and performance wind tunnels at the regionals and the, the statewide challenges. To, and we do that to, to hopefully reduce the variability because we'll be using the, the same wind tunnel uh, every time. Um, and then we'll loan out the other seven. One of ours is permanently uh, stationed right now at the NKES facility in, in Oakley. So any of the schools in that area. And then Smoky Hills uh, Educational Service Center also has one uh, in Salina that they will loan out to any of their member organizations. And we will actually go to Smoky Hills, pick that up and deliver it to other schools um, and, and pick it up and, and bring it back. So um, everything that, that our program does is to reduce the obstacles on your part uh, from participating in this, um, we think, very fun and, and uh, learning event. So we're going to host, as I said, we're going to host those six regional Kid Win Challenges throughout the state. Um, and then the National Kid Win Challenge, it's still scheduled to be in, uh, in person. Uh, that's going to be in New Orleans, Louisiana during the Clean Power 2023 conference and ex uh, exhibition in May uh, 2023. We are already considering and working on um, plans to ensure that the stu the teams that are invited to attend the National Kid Wind can actually go. So we're going to start looking at um, how much funding we have uh, through our corporate sponsorships that we can provide some additional funding to, to actually get those teams there. We'll help with uh, fundraising ideas and um, but some of it is also going to be you know the teams trying to get local corporate sponsorships from their local community but we're going to help in any way we can these are where all the uh, dates and locations for the reg regional challenges so a couple of things I want to emphasize here we do not dictate which of the regional challenges you go so you may be here and um, I don't know where here is, but <laughs> say say you're in the middle of this this triangle. You you can either go to Manhattan, Hutchinson, or Burlington. You can take a look at whichever one is most convenient for you, and in, in terms of either geography or date, and uh, we will still reimburse mileage to uh, any of the regional challenges. Um, so you can see the first one is going to start on February 14th. And the last one is going to be um, March 3rd in Burlington. So it's still just a, a three week period of time. We're going to knock out two regional challenges per week and, and we'll just keep going there. So there are a number of benefits to, to Kid Wind, and, and um, obviously they are going to discover wind energy technology and careers within the wind industry. But we're also just talking STEM here. So, um, you know, any of the principles that they learn during the Kid Win, gear ratios, engineering, those are going to apply to any STEM related uh, event. So it's uh, even though the emphasis is on wind energy, it's not exclusive to wind energy. They're going to learn a lot. Um, it does meet multiple next generation science standards, and we've just uh, shown a, a few examples there. And so basically, the student teams will design, build, present, and test a functional wind turbine. And you can see a couple of examples here. Uh, these are the Oxford Air Sharks who uh, not only won the state challenge uh, many years in a row, but also won uh, the national Kid Win challenge uh, multiple times. And then, as I said, they're going to compete with their peers, but it's it's in a supportive event. Uh, all the teams are helping each other. It's it's just a really really nice thing to see. So the teams do have to build their turbines before they come to the regional uh, Kid Win challenge. 
And um, I will say that uh, we have had a few regional challenges where the teams are still building their turbine um, as they're traveling to, or and sometimes even the first couple of hours when they're at the regional challenge. And we understand that. Uh, we don't certainly don't encourage that, <laughs> but uh, we understand it happens sometimes. Um, but they they do have to have a, a complete wind turbine uh, assembled. Um, we're going to test it in a uh, performance wind tunnel. We're going to measure the energy output and calculate the efficiency. They will also have to do a presentation to a panel of judges, uh, some of whom will be from the um, renewable energy industry. Some will be from, uh, you know, an overall energy and some will be from, you know, uh, professors in, at universities or, or former uh, uh, STEM teachers. Um, but, you know, they're, they're, the, the students will have to present their wind turbine and their design and build process, and they're going to do it on their own. We do not allow any of the coaches or parents in the judges panel just so that we make sure that we get um, true and candid answers from the the students without any influence, shall we say. Um, they also have to take a knowledge quiz, um, which is going to be part of the scoring. And then uh, as we have done in the past, uh, we can add an instant challenge, which is going to have also some, some points or, or percentage of points. And we do the knowledge quiz and the instant challenge because typically the national kid win does that also. So we look at our kid win challenge as a way of preparing the teams for the national kid win challenge so um and we and we take that that pretty seriously we want uh our kansas teams to be successful on the national stage so the more we can do to help them prepare through our regional and statewide challenge that that's what we're going to do um, but the teams will receive a combined score based on their performance in all of those categories. So you could have one team that did really well in the performance wind tunnel, but if they didn't do well in their presentation or on their quiz or, or on the instant challenge, they might not win the overall event. So this is a, a well-rounded competition. So we do get asked quite a bit about how the teachers incorporate um, the, this project and or uh, incorporate the Kid Win Challenge into their curriculum. And uh, I guess basically our answer is we don't really care. Uh, however, it makes it easier for you, the most convenient um, is, is, is okay with us. Uh, we have some teachers that just open it up to after school clubs and homeschool groups. Um, some teachers kick off their lessons after winter break and only spend a couple of weeks on the project. Uh, they start earlier. I did receive a call just this morning from a, a teacher who said she's already getting her students uh, uh, started on on the, the Kid Win Challenge um, because she wants them to have a better outcome than they did uh, on, on the last one. And, you know, we welcome that, but um, can tell you that the the team that won the elementary division at the national kid wind started only a couple of weeks before their regional challenge and and they just kept uh, improving um, through the regional and then on to the state and then on to national so um, it's doable anyway some teachers use the kid wind challenge as a scap capstone project for the students um, so again we don't really care um, but we we do typically only allow two to three teams per school, and that's because of the cap that we have on the number of teams per regional challenge. So what some teachers do is they host an internal competition at their school and then um, select the, the best two or three uh, teams to to go on to our regional challenge. But that that way, all of their students get involved and, and get to, um, again, that STEM education that uh, we think is such an integral part of this Kid Win Challenge. So I talked about the regional limitations um, just due to our time uh, of, you know, we we basically allow, um, I think, 20, 15 minutes per event and then five minutes per uh, per team to, to get from that event to the next event. 
Um, so we pretty much limit it to 16 teams. We start the registration at about eight o'clock and start the actual event at nine. And then it's still, you know, if we have a full regional uh, load of 16 teams, that, that'll take us to, to 3.30 or four o'clock in the afternoon and teams still have to get back to their school. So we don't want to go much longer than that. So if a school has more than two teams, we're gonna put any number of teams over two on a waiting list. And then if there are less than 16 teams registered for that particular regional, we'll, we'll add them based on uh, when they were added to the, the queue. Um, if the regional challenge is full, you do always have the option of selecting a different regional uh, challenge. And, and again, we will still reimburse the mileage to and from that. Um, again, if you have multiple teams, we do encourage you to, to have a method to reduce them, uh, for instance, by hosting an internal competition. And by the way, we, if, if you request, we, we will certainly provide assistance for those internal competitions. Uh, certainly, uh, an easy thing is by loaning you the equipment, the wind tunnels, the energy sensors, the anemometers. Um, but it, also, if we have time and you would like us to, we'll, we'll actually help help you run that internal competition. Um, I don't think we've ever had anybody ask us to do that before, but but it would be well within what we do. Um, so the top two teams in each division, the fourth through eighth grade and the ninth through 12th grade will be invited to attend the statewide Kid Win Challenge. And then the top two teams in each division at the statewide challenge will be invited to attend the national event. Now, that's what we do. Um, what happened this last year is a national, we actually had representatives from the National Kid Win Challenge at our statewide challenge. And um, he had indicated that, well, you know, we could use a few more teams. So we're happy if you invite the top three teams in each age division. And so we did. And then he, as the representative of the, the National Kid Win Challenge, also invited um, the two judges choice recipients that we had for each age division. So we actually ended up sending eight teams to the national event. All eight participated. One did it virtually, the other seven actually attended. And of those seven teams that were there um, in person, three of them were net recognized on the national stage for, uh, for their um, performance. So uh, any student in the fourth through eighth or ninth through twelfth uh, grade can participate in the Kid Win Challenge. Uh, there's no restriction to whether it's a public school, private school, home school, after school club, whatever. It just has to be a, a student who's in the fourth through eighth or ninth through twelfth grade. Um, if it is um, a uh, home school or an after school club. Uh, we do have to have a, an adult or a coach with them at the event. And the Kid Win Challenge rules require one adult per 10 students. And if there's an issue with that, just, just let us know and, and uh, we'll, we'll look for some ways to resolve that. We don't have a restriction on team size, but um, as most of you teachers know, if you have teams that are larger than three or five students, you're gonna get two or three students that do all of the work and um, some other ones are just gonna be hanging on. So we, we actually recommend three to five students per team. Uh, again, there's no cost to register. There's only cost for supplies to build the turbine and, and of course your time. Um, the only required item is a Kidwin generator from Vernier that costs about $7. We have, multiple uh, generators. So just reach out to us uh, first and um, make a request and we'll see how many we can provide. Uh, again, we will reimburse mileage uh, and stipends for teacher substitutes. And then we also provide lunch for uh, lunch and snacks for uh, the students and the teachers. And um, uh, <laughs> Couple of funny things. We don't like to take any of the food back with us. And for the ones uh, where we're allowed to, some some of the facilities don't let us uh, have the food. But 
you know, if it's a, a packaged snack then or a fruit, then we can give those out to the students. And we actually had at the the Dodge City one, uh, some students came up to me and and asked if they could take all the bananas because they wanted to practice making their grandmother's banana bread uh, recipe. So I said, yeah, sure, we don't want them. So uh, what does the typical day look like for a, a regional or a statewide challenge? Um, Again, uh, like I said, we, we have the registration uh, starts at eight. So that's generally when the teams arrive. We, we actually have some that will arrive at 8.59 uh, a.m. And, and that makes me a little uh, anxious because I like to have all my, my teams there, but that's okay. Uh, we recognize things happen. Uh, so the teams will rotate through the three to four areas of the competition, uh, we'll provide, uh, a schedule prior to the event. We'll have updated schedules at the event. And um, so we're just real, real keen on communication and, and we'll let you know of any changes. Um, towards the end of the event, uh, we do have to tally up all the scores from these three or four separate events. So um, that takes a little while. And generally what we'll have is uh, one of the Kid Win Challenge sponsors uh, do a presentation to the schools. And so this will provide the students information on one, what the uh, corporate sponsor does in regard to energy or renewable energy. And um, it also will provide the students some information on jobs that are uh, within those sectors and, and how the, the corporate sponsors go about recruiting those and, and how the students can, can um, you know, maybe apply for some of those. The winners will be announced at a, a, around 3.30, sometimes before, some, hopefully not after, but sometimes before, uh, because we want to get the teams on the road around four. Um, some of them will have a two-hour drive, and, and we want to get them back. And of course, those times will shift based on the number of teams. This is the staging area. So, so we have basically four areas uh, of, the, of the event. Um, this is the staging area. This is where all the teams are at the beginning. And, and uh, when they come back from any of their four events, they'll come back to the staging area. There's, there's, a, there's a lot of, uh, it's just no other way to say it. There's a lot of energy in this room. Uh, the kids are all humming. They're all chattering. They're, they're having a good time. Some of them are frantic because their turbines have fallen apart and they're trying to fix them before they get into the wind tunnel. The, this is a really exciting place to be and, and it, it's always a lot of fun to be there. Um, this is a practice wind tunnel. So every one of our regional and statewide and the national um, will have tunnels set up so that the students can uh, go in there and see how their, their, their turbine is performing before they have to go into the performance wind tunnel. And um, when I get to the performance wind tunnel, you will see that it is exactly the same. So we don't want the students to practice on one thing and then have to do the performance on another thing. Uh, like I said at the beginning, we want to reduce the variability between uh, one regional competition to another. We want it to be as exact for the first team that did it as, as we are for the last team that did it. Um, I recognize that that some of you schools might not be able, so these, these wind tunnels uh, cost about $2,500. We recognize that not all schools can provide those. That's why we purchased nine of them so that we can loan out uh, the seven and your students can participate with the real thing, um, not not build a, a turbine that that will withstand a, a little floor fan um, that that's like about you know twelve inches wide and then go to to a four by four uh, foot wind tunnel and and have the turbine all blown apart. We don't want that to happen. This is uh, two examples of the judges panel. Um, so uh, we do have uh, this, this person is uh, a professional in the energy industry as, uh, as is this one. Oh, ac actually all three of these were uh, professionals in the energy industry. So we, we recruit judges that um, uh, we think would uh, do really well at, at talking to the students. And as you can see, these are just the students presenting their turbine 
and their design process to the judges. There aren't any extra people hanging around in here. So we just want them to feel comfortable just speaking to the judges and we want the judges to, to ferret out that it was actually the students that did the work and not some parent or, or some, some teacher that, that did the bulk of it. We do have a knowledge quiz and um, the, the team is, is welcome to work on this as a team. Uh, so this brings in some of the other um, non-STEM attributes of the Kid Win Challenge, right? So uh, we're talking teamwork, we're talking consensus building, we're talking, um, you know, having the confidence to convince uh, some of your peers that, that your answer is is more correct than their answer. So there there's a lot of uh, other non-energy benefits that you can get from from the Kid Win Challenge. This is the MacGyver Instant Challenge that we did in 2019. Uh, we did have different instant challenges for the 2022 event, and we're going to have a different instant challenge for the 2023. Um, and because this is an instant challenge, we are not going to provide any information to either the teams or the coaches ahead of time. It's going to be something that that day they will get the instructions um, and during their 15 minute period of time and and they'll have to to figure it out and um complete it is this stressful yes it is <laughs> so um it, it's but it's just another part of the competition and they do have to experience this at the national kid win challenge so so we want to have them prepared this is an example or this is uh, a picture of the veneer uh, Kidwin turbine generator. This is the one uh, required part that we have for our Kidwin challenges. Um, we do not have an open generator division, although there will be one uh, at the National Kidwin. So the teams are welcome to build a turbine that uses the veneer uh, Kidwin generator for uh, the regional and the statewide competition. But if they want to have a parallel track where they're designing a turbine that runs on an open generator they are certainly welcome to do that and if they make it to national kid win they they can they can certainly use it then each team must have its own turbine and base so uh you can't have any sharing of parts between between teams uh even though i said all teams help each other um but each team has to have its own turbine and its own base you can't you can't interchange any parts including blades so they had i mean everything has to be this one team uh versus this one team each team also has to have a coach like i said before one coach per uh at least uh for 10 kids 10 10 students and then um, we, I don't think we have the, the Kid Win Challenge uh, rules up yet for 2023. Uh, the main reason for that is because our planning right now is ahead of the National Kid Win Challenge and they haven't updated their 2023 rules yet, but they will be on our, our website once they do. So the turbines have to fit inside that uh, 48 by 48 inch wind tunnel. Um, we do encourage, you to allow some room you don't want the tip of that blade catching the uh the plastic frame of the wind tunnel one because you don't want to destroy it two because it's going to slow your blade down and and affect your electrical output so um allow a little bit of room for that the turbine must be freestanding has to have its own tower and uh, we do have weights to hold the turbine in place, but some teams uh, incorporate the weight in their base, and and you know that's fun also. So they they can do they can do what they want. The power has to be generated solely by the wind, so the student can't um, give it a nudge with their finger. It it has to start uh, as when you turn the fans on. We do allow the students to tell us when to start measuring the performance, so. Um, if it takes a little while for that uh, for the turbine to get up to speed, we'll wait for them to give us the, the go ahead. And I'll tell you, that's that's one part of the competition that they actually love to do. Um, and in fact, sometimes they'll fight for the honor of, you know, giving the thumbs up to the uh, person measuring the the electrical output. 
Um, you are allowed to use purchase parts other than pre-made airfoils, but um, will tell you that the judges do like creativity. So they like they like seeing things that are repurposed. They um, they like seeing things that are recycled. Uh, if you came in with a completely vernier wind kit built turbine um, and it performs well, you'll allow that. But you know, they might score less points than than somebody who who designed something or on their own. And then we do also insist that the blades are made out of safe materials. We don't want sharp uh, metal, um, plexiglass, uh, or, or any other hard material that has a sharp edge. Um, we have not had a uh, kid win challenge yet, whether it be a regional, a state, or a national where blades have not flown off from the hub. Um, and if it's a, if it's anything sharp, it's gonna go through that plastic and, and what we don't want is for it to get, you know, to a student <laughs> or one of us. <laughs> so um, when when we do the the kid win challenges, we hook the energy sensor up to a 30 ohm resistor. So you should be testing it that way. Um, we have had some teams in the past that have either overlooked that or they've forgotten about it, and they will test their turbine in a uh, in front of a fan or in, or in a tunnel without a, a 30 ohm load on it. And um, then they come to the our regional or statewide challenge and they don't perform as well because they are not testing it under the same parameters. So make sure all the energy sensors that, that we loan out with the wind tunnels have a built-in switch that um, you can just flick it to the 30 ohm resistor and, and everything's good to go. The approximate wind speed in our um, four by four foot wind tunnel is about three and a half meters per second or 7.8 miles per hour. Um, so that's the speed we're gonna generate. If you're testing it with a floor fan that does like, you know, one mile per hour, I'm not sure that <laughs> your turbine will, will survive ours. And um, National uh, Kid Wind has a high speed wind a uh, tunnel that um, was known as the destructor. So um, anyway, just try and test it under the, the same parameters. And, and if you have any questions, just give us a call at any time. This is the equipment that you will see at our uh, regional and statewide and the, the national kid wind. So we have the competition wind tunnel, we have the energy sensor. So they will just uh, hook these wires up to the wires uh, from the generator on, on their wind turbine and that will measure the output. These are Bluetooth enabled. So um, what we actually do is during the competition, we'll uh, project it out on a board and everybody can see how that, that particular wind tunnel is doing or wind turbine is doing. And then we have the anemometers uh, to measure the wind speed of the tunnel, which we then use for the uh, energy efficiency uh, calculations. So if you're, if you're scheduled for one of our uh, regional competitions, we typically don't have a problem with the statewide, but some of our regional competitions, because we're holding them in February and March, it's Kansas, right? So, um, We'll we'll look uh, for the weather uh, ahead of time. Hope you know our goal is always to cancel it the evening before, so that you're not already on the road. We don't want you to get on the road if um, the weather is not going to be conducive to uh, utmost safety. Also, if we don't have um, two schools with a total of five teams uh, registered for a regional challenge at least two weeks ahead, we may cancel that event and give you the opportunity to go to one of the other uh, regional challenges, assuming that they're not full. Um, we'll just have to, to work that out as, as we go along. Uh, I want to show a, a quick um, uh, video of the Oxford Air Sharks. You can see uh, these were um, started in the Kid Win Challenge as the fourth through eighth grade, and then they uh, graduated to the the ninth through twelfth. Um, but even well, they were they were scoring, uh, they were doing championship performance 
at either competition or at either age. So um, this was uh, um, a team that everybody wanted to uh, emulate. Can can everybody see this? David, you'll have to drag it into your shared screen. I did. I thought. Okay, hold on. So do I? I'm gonna. That also works. Stop sharing and then reshare. Okay. Uh, did I stop? Okay. Yes. Okay, and then I need to reshare. Share screen. Okay. Can you see it now? Yes. Okay. So I'll start over from the beginning. So this is Mike Arquin here. He's the uh, founder of National Kid Win. And this is the Oxford Air Shark. They uh, custom made these blades. Uh, there's a twist in them. Uh, they did a hot wire um, cutting of styrofoam and then they covered it with this hard, I think cardboard. Um, and then they, they glued that to the styrofoam. And they would actually carry these things around in, in protected styrofoam um, carrying cases. Their carrying cases also had the pitch, which is the angle of the blade, um, worked into it so that they could support all the blades when they were reattaching it to that center hub. Oh, okay. And so I think they topped out at what, 172 joules? Or 127? Um, I'm not sure at this one, but the last time they were at Nationals, it was 247. Okay, 247 joules. And they melted the generator, the Kidwin generator, at 126 joules. Yeah, yeah so regionals. you can see they, they get this thing spinning pretty darn well. Oh, and this is in the collegiate uh, wind competition wind tunnel. So th this isn't in one of the uh kid wind wind tunnels this is in the wind tunnel that the collegiate wind teams use so that's pretty impressive that it it keeps together <laughs> um and then one thing i i will say if your teams do make it to the national kid wind competition um the the collegiate wind team is there at the same time so we always, uh, Mike always works to ensure that there is some interaction between the kid win participants and the uh, collegiate kid win. Not collegiate kid win, the collegiate um, win team. Okay, so I made that transition a little bit better. All right, so here are the 2022 champions from the statewide kid win challenge. Uh, we have the um, Turbin Turners from Oakley High School and the Gerald La Tabina from Beloit Junior Senior High School. Um, and so uh, they were the, the first place uh, teams for the 4th through 8th and 9th through 12th. And so we actually invited the, the top three teams to uh, the national and then the national invited the, the top, uh, the, the two um judges choice award winners and then these are the teams that were actually recognized from the 2022 national kid win challenge so this is the hutch stem blue um, they were the national champions for the elementary school division and um, so let me just a, a quick story about these um, these students they did not even start these were the ones that didn't start until two weeks before the regional challenge um, and then they advanced from the regional challenge to the statewide. They did not place. They were not one of the top three teams. So they were not invited to the um, national could win challenge from us, from our program. But the representative from the national kid win, who was the judge, and he uh, got to see all of the teams, he awarded them the judge's choice. And he invited them to the to the nationals where they took top place. And then uh, so Jared Latabina went in uh, went on to win the judges award, 
and the wind chill, which was from Dighton Middle School, they went on to win the Innovation Award. And I can tell you that there were at least two other Kansas schools that were in the running for some of the other awards that uh, are given out at the National Kid Win Challenge. So the um, the Kansas teams just had a really, really good run, and we want to keep that going uh, because Kansas is, you know, huge for the, the wind industry, and um, we want to keep being at the, uh, at the forefront. Um, we do not have the registration yet, uh, I believe, right, Yvonne? Yeah, registration will be live as soon as our new website is okay. switched over. Yes, we are currently working on our website. Um, we hope to have that switched over to the new one soon. Um, and at that point, uh, we'll have the, the registration links and, and details uh, up. Um, but when you do register, don't worry if you don't have all of the information. Just, um, just go ahead and register so that we can start looking at the number of teams. And um, then uh, we will get back to you with, hey, we still need this information. And most likely that those emails will come from Yvonne. So uh, you will soon learn to recognize Yvonne Cook's name because she's going to be sending a number of um, emails out. You'll either really, really like my emails or dread them. Yes. Um, so the Kid Win Challenge isn't the only thing that we do. Uh, we do K through 12 energy education to any K through 12 uh, school in the state of Kansas. Uh, we'll go anywhere. Uh, we'll stay for multiple days doing energy presentations. Um, we've done this to a number of schools where we stay for uh, a couple of days and, and um, we'll be in one classroom and the, the math and science teachers will just rotate all the students through us. So we'll give the same presentation again and again. But we have a, a number of different pieces of equipment for uh, interactive um, learning about energy. Uh, these are our bikes that are hooked up to a generator and the students have to, to light up uh, either incandescent or LED bulbs. We have a hand crank that does the same. We have infrared cameras that we loan out. We have data loggers that uh, schools can use. We have the LabQuest Mini. We have a number of different pieces of, of equipment, which will also be on our uh, website when it when it becomes live. So um, if, if you want us to do a presentation or, or borrow some equipment, um, that's also all free of charge. So we'll come out to your school and it doesn't cost you anything to have us there. Um, we do have a couple of breakout rooms that are based on, uh, we have one on energy efficiency, one on energy auditing, where um, they have to use the equipment to solve clues to get into the final box. It's a breakout room, but they have to get into the final box. Um, and they'll use scientific equipment like light meters and ultrasonic leak detectors, infrared cameras that will help them find the the clue. And by the way, all of that equipment is the same thing that we use when we go out to businesses to do energy audits. So um, it's it's CTE at its finest. And these are the contacts for all of us at uh, the Kansas Energy Program. Um, I've been the one yapping at you for the, I don't know, for the last uh, 50 minutes. Uh, Yvonne's been the one breaking in every now and then, uh, correcting me when I'm wrong. Uh, Kurt Foley, I believe, is still on. Um, he's usually our strong, silent type. We have Ryan Hamill, who's off doing some other things. And then we have Mandy Putnam, uh, who was a, a former science teacher, I, or uh, yes, former science teacher, who's helping us with uh, uh, developing some curriculum and, and, in, and instruction. So um, that's it. Uh, I'll open it up for questions if anybody has any. Yeah, so you should be able to unmute yourself um, if you want, or you can type it in the chat box if you have any questions. You are also not obligated to ask any questions. Correct. You can always <laughs> just email me later if you have questions that you just didn't think of. Um, I will say, uh, I, I should have put it on here. Um, you can get updates through our Kansas Energy Program newsletter 
Um, oh, we have a couple of questions. Oh, answered all the questions. Okay. Um, so if you're not getting that newsletter, um, we that is our, our primary way of updating on the Kid Win Challenges and our other energy education. So you can go to our website at kansasenergyprogram.org and sign up for that newsletter. Other than that, we'll go ahead and and uh, and end this, and we hope to see you at one of our regional challenges uh, or at one of our workshops. Have a great evening. Thank you, everyone.